live from 10,023 feet, Haleakala Summit, Maui, Hawaii, USA. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, what are the biggest disappointments in cycling? Raising your hands too early in celebration has nothing on riding for hours to a cafe that's just stopped serving or finding out your new team kit looks like this. Yeah, that's a proper disappointment. Oh, yeah. We also have news on a brand new 200 kilometer world record, an update on Lachlan Morton's ride around France, plus two more equally bonkers alternative tours to France and another new drivetrain that reduces friction by a million percent. Wow. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Mariana Voss is now officially the greatest of all time. Last week, she took her 29th and then 30th stage wins at the Giro d'Italia Donna, which is currently the biggest stage race on the women's calendar. And that gives her a near 40% strike rate when you look at the road stages alone. Yeah. Now, rumor has it, though, that Eddie Merckx thinks she's disrespected the race by pulling out a day early to concentrate on the Olympics. Mm. Not surprised. No. Uh, we also learned that Merckx's stage winning record has been equaled by Mark Cavendish. And unlike last week, where Cavendish then took another win the day that our show came out, this stat, we hope, is to remain the same until at least Friday, the next sprint opportunity. Indeed. Yeah, Rumour has it though, Dan, that Eddie Merckx thinks that he's uh, also disrespected the race by not pulling out early. <laughs> Well, Merckx was predictably bullish, wasn't he? Uh, when asked how he felt about Cavendish drawing level, pointing out that he also, though, along with the 34 stage wins, wore the yellow jersey for 111 days and won on every type of terrain. Well, yeah, which actually makes me think he should have won more stages, shouldn't he? And that if all you can do is sprint, 34 is far more impressive. Successfully offending not just one but two legendary cyclists there, Cy. Very well done. <laughs> All right, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, we also learned this week that Gison on Espanol presenter Oscar Pujol has bought those glasses you were pining after, Cy, that your wife persuaded you not to buy, and he's actually made them look very good. You mean made them look even better? No, I really meant not quite as bad, but I didn't want to offend Oscar too much. Uh, now moving on, the Tour de France this year has been an absolute firecracker, although some of the shine was taken off the battle for the overall victory when Pogacar put about an hour and a half into everybody at the end of the opening week of the race. Yeah, it was amazing to watch, wasn't it? But now, it kind of feels a little bit like, like you found your Christmas presents before they've been wrapped, you know, just to... But, no more know, surprises nice, left. But a little bit of a disappointment at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. It's not over yet. So no, it's we've not. still got a week no. to go. But yes, it did get us thinking about the biggest disappointment for all cyclists. And rather unsurprisingly, we've managed to come up with quite a few. <laughs> yeah, right. First up, the all-time biggest disappointment for all cyclists has to be, as you mentioned in the opener, riding to a cafe and finding that it's shut. And it really shouldn't be quite the disappointment that it is, should it? I mean, you've only missed out on having a drink and a cake. And, and a sandwich yeah. and another drink. Yes, true. Uh, but you've been thinking about that cafe and about your lunch for the entire ride, only to find out that it's shut when you get there. Even finding an alternative cafe never quite cuts the mustard when you've got your heart set on a specific one, does no, it? No, it really doesn't. It is a massive disappointment. You all know that, don't you? Number two, though, riding into a headwind and then not getting a tailwind home. Yes. Yeah, this one, for some reason, I just never managed to get my head around even in decades of riding because I would almost always set off on my ride with the aim of going into a headwind. Try to. Yes, it's not possible in every direction for me because I'm on the south coast. If there's a southerly wind, I can't start with a headwind, not for very long, at least. Not unless you're windsurfing. No. Anyway, when possible, I would ride into the headwind, then I'd always do a loop as well. So invariably, I never really got the tailwind that I felt I deserved on the way home. Did you never think that you should just ride the other way around? I have thought that since, yes, but I'm not riding as much anymore. So I can't utilize <laughs> There's a reason it. to come out of retirement, mate. Yeah. Right, on to number three then, and in a similar vein, it is getting held up on an epic descent. Oh, yes, I feel your pain on this one. So frustrating, you've done all that work getting to the top of the climb. You're ready to enjoy the reward of a fast flowing descent, only to get held up by traffic or a slow moving vehicle and you can't get past. And then having to break the whole way oh, down the lovely man. descent. That oh. is awful, isn't it? Oh. All right, ready for number four? Yeah. Okay, finding out that your team kit for the next season looks like this. Ah, 
That was terrible, that kit, wasn't it? But to be fair, there was always that sense of trepidation when you find out as a pro cyclist, or in fact any cyclist that rides with a team, what are you going to have to wear for next season every time you ride your bike for the next 12 months? Now, I have had some bad ones in my time. I don't think I've ever felt quite um, that naked, in fact, or in fact as naked as this. Let's not get started on you being naked, Si. No, that's a fair point, actually. Uh, right, on to number five, and that one is when the finish line is not actually the finish line. That's a massive disappointment. When, when does that happen? Well, I'm specifically thinking of a few times back when I was racing that some idiot organiser decided to place the KOM point before the top of the climb. It actually happened on Sunday at the Tour de France on stage 15. You're calling the ASO idiot, <laughs> well, idiot race yeah, They put a KOM line, there was four kilometres of climbing straight <laughs> after it. Oh, that is quite harsh, actually, isn't it? It's amazing how hard you can push yourself to get to a finish line, isn't it? But then try and get your head and legs into gear to go beyond that line. That's another matter, it isn't it? It is, yeah. But ASO, you're not idiots. No, no, no. Right, number six, getting to an event without your cycle oh, shoes. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, you can borrow pretty much every other piece of clothing or equipment, can't you? But if you get to an event without your own shoes, it's quite hard to find a spare pair, especially if you're size 11 like me. Uh, it did happen to me once, and I never, ever forgot my shoes again. But I also saw someone at a sportive that had forgotten theirs, but they did crack on with a pair of trainers, but they had speed play lollipop oh, pedals. Oh, that must have been hurting their feet <laughs> by the end. My word. Although, I've got to say, Lachlan Morton has just proven that sandals can be highly effective for covering 300 kilometres a day every day. Um, anyway, the final biggest disappointment in the world. Missing the Strava KOM by second. No. No. Uh, getting an uh oh email from Strava. <laughs> no. Is it losing your Strada Bianca KOM to Wout van Aert that you held for over 10 years? Ah, oh, no. No, it's not, not that down. In fact, it's nothing to do with Strava, actually. No, the biggest disappointment you can have as a cyclist, and it is actually a bad one, this one, walking to where you left your bike and finding it's not there anymore. Yeah. That is truly devastating. It is, yeah. In fact, I think we shouldn't dwell too much on that final disappointment because no. it's going to be too harrowing, I think, for anyone that's ever experienced that. Good point. So those are the biggest disappointments in cycling that aren't actually that disappointing because if they were, they'd be too upsetting <laughs> to watch. Um, anyway, let us know in the comments section below what you think is the biggest disappointment in cycling. Uh, should we move on now to give you an update on Lachlan Morton's out tour? Yes, He's well, not wearing his sandals now. By the time people are watching this, he might actually have already finished because yes, uh, beating the Tour de France peloton is possible and potentially by five days. Yeah, 65,000 metres of climbing on his own, sleeping in hedges and basically just cranking it out. It's got to be said, if I was him, I'd probably try to take a little bit longer, maybe add a couple of nice meals out and just, just made it look a bit harder, you know? If it was you doing this challenge, Si, I think it's safe to say that you would definitely have made it look harder. <laughs> the question is, would you still be in Brittany at well, this point in a sleeping bag? No, I'll be honest, I'd probably still be trying to work out how best to wear that bum bag. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. yeah, which is why you're still in Brittany. I would love to see Lachlan, though, going up against some of the best ultra-endurance rides in the world because he clearly has got the talent for that yes. long stuff, hasn't well, he? Well, that's it. Is he the world's best? I don't know. Hey, round the world record, anyone? Hey, because his daily distance at this out tour was only 60 kilometres less than Mark Beaumont, but the route was way tougher, albeit shorter, um, and he had to find his own food and accommodations. So wouldn't it be cool to see him try round the world record? It would. I'm, I'd imagine that'd be daunting even for Lachlan. Yeah, well, uh, but anyway, as you know, he has also been fundraising on this ride for World Bicycle Relief as well. So if you feel able to support that charity, we're going to put a link again in the description below this video. Next up, your weekly dose of GCN inspiration. We picked out our favourite three photos this week, but they can be videos that you upload to the GCN app. Uh, third place this week gets themselves a GCN Contrast Edition baseball cap, and it goes to Jessica Holly. Uh, views for miles, stunning roads of Mole. Nice. That does look fantastic. Actually, Marked down for being in portrait mode, which works very well on the app. Not so well when it goes out on YouTube. Oh, it's a dilemma, isn't it? it? Is, do, you yeah. get, do you get more likes on the app because <laughs> it looks great? Or, or do you get do yourself you just... a baseball cap or do you get one of the next prizes up? Well, indeed. Well, should we talk about those then, shall we? Second prize this week is a GCN Pursuit green t-shirt. 
and a GCN Elite Fly Duo water bottle pack in red, not yellow. Don't get to choose, not this time. Anyway, the winner is Philip W. Shipman, uh, Highland Gravel Virgin Voyage for my partner's new gravel bike. And what a virgin voyage. There we go. That does look like a fantastic gravel wow. track, doesn't it? That looks amazing. That does look absolutely amazing, doesn't so it? So in the middle of nowhere there. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, the big winner this week, getting themselves a GSIN Cool Red sweatshirt, a GSIN Pursuit Bright Blue t-shirt, and a GSIN Glass Keep Cup. I, I use my Keep Cup a lot, actually. You do, mate. It's very, very commendable. Uh, goes to Brendan. Uh, cycling the highest paved road in Canada, the Highwood Pass. Uh, three friends rode to the summit, normally covered in snow in June. We hit it on a dry summer's day and the descent was simply brilliant. There we go. Look at the backdrop there. That's unbelievable. It is fantastic, isn't it? But I'm quite confused. We hit the summit in a dry 30 degree centigrade day, but yet you're wearing full winter kit. Is this you Canadians messing around with yeah. this again? Oh, it was such a nice day. We, you think uh... your summers are cold? <laughs> yeah. Although, actually, you can't joke. Canada is roasting at the minute, isn't it? Is it? Well, it's not here. I can no. tell you that much. No, it's not. Peeing it down every single day during the Tour de France, pretty much. In it Bath. has indeed, yeah. Uh, right, don't forget to get yourselves involved, ready for next week's show, to put yourself in with a chance of winning a prize. You've just got to upload your best photo or video to the GSIN app. Portrait, landscape, we'll let you decide. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we're going to start with news of a new world record. Jonas Boer, on an outdoor circuit in Hallared in Sweden, rode 200 kilometres in 4 hours and 37 minutes and 15 seconds, which is an average speed of 43.3 k per hour. That is mightily impressive there, especially considering Jonas is 54, and he only started cycling just over 10 years ago. So there we go. The record, we've got to say, is still yet to be ratified and therefore currently unofficial, but they think they've done everything right, so it should be a formality. Mm. We're done soon. You know what? That sounds like a new challenge for Ollie to me, Ooh. particularly as Jonas didn't have ideal weather conditions on the day that he did his record. Uh, anyway, moving on to some news from Australia now, where the Victorian government has announced that they are going to give out 1,000 C-cent smart lights to local cyclists in a bid to improve their safety. Hmm. Not sure what I think about that, uh, although generous, clearly. Uh, the lights will gather data from the riders that use them, though, and the government will then be able to use that to improve cycling infrastructure for everyone. So that is a good thing, yeah. isn't it, really? That's the idea behind it, and hopefully it will all work out and maybe other governments will take heed and do the same well, thing. Well, true that. I just don't like the idea of giving cyclists lights and hoping that's going to fix the problem. But anyway. Well, let's stick with tech, because I noticed on that same website, ZDNet, that Telstra have teamed up with Aramber, which is a cycling company in Sydney, to produce smart 5G helmets, which will give users real-time traffic updates, as well as alerting them to car doors opening, plus a collision detector as well. Good Lord. I noticed the helmet uh, also produces video and allows remote coaching. So you could select your very own, I don't know, Mark Maggio, uh, DS, to shout at you through your helmet as you suffer along through your intervals. Yeah. Didn't you use something similar, a smart helmet and out of Badia for a video? I once? did. I believe, believe you and Matt were very helpful at yes. uh, helping me get the best out we of We were fantastic, yeah. yeah. Uh, right, the US gravel scene ticked off another major event at the weekend, Crusher in the Tusha, which is a 69-mile event that starts in Beaver. Oh, that's where I recognise yeah. it from. Uh, well, unlike other gravel events, this one has a summit finish 69 miles after leaving Beaver. Sofia Gomez Villafane uh, won the women's race in a time of just under 5 hours and 20 minutes. And Pete Stetter, my personal favourite, uh, managed to win the men's race. He did. Uh, now, we've been keeping you up to date on Lachlan Morton's epic French adventures, of course, over the last three weeks. But fellow Australian and ultra endurance rider Jack Thompson's exploits are also quite impressive, aren't they? Equally bonkers, yes. So rather than riding the whole route unsupported, including the transfers like Lachlan, what Thompson has set out to do is to ride every stage in around half the number of days of the pro. So effectively, two stages per day. Now, this does not sound like a particularly enjoyable challenge to me. No. <laughs> uh, especially when you actually think about some of the stats. Uh, Sunday, for example, casual 298 kilometres, including two ascents of Mont Ventoux, almost 12 hours in the saddle and over 10,000 calories burned. 
Ouch. Mm. That is a crazy challenge. Uh, but this is a man who has before Everested three times in three days in three different countries, holds the record for distance ridden in a week, and who's ridden a Taiwan KOM four times in a non-stop ride that took 56 hours. And you know how hard that climb is, Si, I don't do, you? I do, yeah. This makes me feel... Um or mentally and physically quite inferior, uh, which which happens a lot, but that particularly that time. Anyway, if all goes to plan, he will overtake the Tour de France peloton uh, tomorrow and get to Paris well ahead of them too. Ooh, we could have a pursuit, Luckland versus mm. Jack. There seems to be no end of alternative tours de France going on this year, in fact, because Travis Johnston is doing his version in South Africa, which sounds implausible in many respects. That's a long way from France, but he is able to do it virtually on Zwift. Yeah all 3,500 kilometres of it over the same 23 days. Uh, in doing so, he not only sets out to break the world record for kilometres covered on an indoor trainer in a month, but also to raise money for the Quebec charity, who, like World Basket Relief, provide bikes to those most in need of them. Yeah, Can you imagine a month? Like, what? I just can't. I can't imagine, actually. You're, you're feeling even more mentally and physically inferior. Wow, well, so. just, you know. Well, anyway. Anyway, we shall finish Cycling Shorts with a bit of tech news, or Guzan Albayrak is attempting to reinvent the drivetrain, doing away with cogs, chain rings and chains, and instead using a pulley system that is claimed to be four times more efficient than a traditional drivetrain. Wow. It is going to be showcased at Eurobike this year, and I've heard that Ollie is particularly excited about this and is contemplating another attempt at our record if the efficiency claims prove to be true. Not even making that up, are you? Well, I mean, I'm a little bit making it up. <laughs> uh, just before we do move on, we actually have got a brand new giveaway for you all. So Chamois Butter are giving away 100 tubs of their Comfort Enhancing Cream. And all you need to do to put yourself in with a chance of winning one is follow the link below and answer a very simple question. Yeah, good luck to everyone. And, um, well, if you're about to tackle an ultra-endurance challenge, like, I don't know, riding the route of the Tour de France in half the time that it takes to ride or the an Tour de France, trainer. then yeah, please maybe enter a few times just to try and get to... Actually, you can't do that, can you? No. No. It's against the rules. Maybe just go and buy some first, just to be on the safe side. Or you could use different email addresses. Cool. Hack forward slash bodge of the week now. Uh, first up, this from Matthias ZW, custom 3D printed and hand painted donut bar end plugs. Hack! Yes, today I crave donuts, so rather than going out and buying them, he just developed uh, a UV resin design, uh, the donuts, and 3D printed them. Afterwards, I hand painted them, that simple and very fast. That hand painting is impressive. As is the miniature bite out of the donut. That, yeah, yeah, no way would anyone nibble a donut like that, particularly not one that size. I mean, that's, a, that's a rubbish bite. You, could, you could fill your bars with cream, couldn't you, so that there's some cream oh, God, oozed, a, oozed, sorry, some jam. What a thought. <laughs> just like, oh, I'm just gonna. Just, <laughs> but why don't you just, why don't you just fill your, uh, fill your handlebars with like energy gel or something? You can just sort of suck it out. Yeah. Triathletes athletes probably already that, doing that, aren't they? Just like a dove of straw attached to their bike. Could be dangerous if you hit a bump while <laughs> trying to feed. <laughs> oh, anyway, right. that was a hack from me, and it's yeah. a hack from 82% of you as well. Wow. Well, yeah, well deserved. Richly deserved. Right. Uh, next up, we got this one from uh, Davi Patti. Uh, 3D printed hack. hack. <laughs> Double-barrel banana bottle cage. My word. Actually, to be fair, I might take that back. I mean, I'm not keen on that. Well, long-time viewers will know that I'm not a huge fan of uh, bananas as ride food. Well, I um, think that could go quite well if you've already got your jam-filled bars with donut end plugs at the front and a couple of bananas to munch on down the bottom. If I had jam-filled handlebars, I would never even look twice at a donut, uh, especially not one that was potentially hitting my feet as I pedalled. Um, it's quite a broad cage, that one, isn't it? Mm. Ruining your aerodynamics. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, I'm going to say that's a bodge. I don't, uh, I don't like bananas and... Uh, I don't think you've thought about the aerodynamic properties. Don't like bananas? No, not on rides. Like, they make me more hungry. <laughs> the amount of times where I had a banana and then I blew my doors and felt really hungry. Yeah. And I'm just and I'm just like, yeah, there's so many better things to eat on Number a Number seven, ride. top ten biggest disappointments in cycling. Eating a banana on a ride, feel more hungry. All right, True well, that. I'm going with Hack because it sounds like you're going with Bodge. I am, I am. And yeah. uh, I'm just going with the masses. Again, 62% going with Hack for that one. Uh, next up, Ian Eleven, Tour de France whilst cutting grass. I had to mow my lawn while there was a great stage of the tour on. Must have been one in the first week. Uh, didn't want to miss it, so um, some masking tape, my phone and wireless earbuds made sure I could watch the race whilst cutting the lawn. Now, this looks 
looks like my type of lawnmower side. Yes, the lazy well, absolutely. Um, because you also get to listen to bike racing yeah. Yeah, at the same time. Um, I think that's probably a hack, actually, isn't it? Can you give anything with like gaff yellow gaffer tape a hack? Well, well it, 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 as long as you're watching it on GCN Plus, it's a hack from me. Yeah, there we go. I thought that's uh, I thought that would do. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you, you'd probably need a bigger screen. Really, you could have 3D printed a nice handy bracket. But but yeah, in the moment, I'd, I'd give that a hack. Hmm. I'm going for hack as well. So 67% of people went with it. Yeah. Um, right. You, Sai, were sent an Instagram post last week. I was you? indeed, yeah. Of I've got to say. zip ties yeah. in space. Jakob Bridget. Well, not necessarily the first ones in space, but the first ones on Mars, apparently. So thank you, uh, Jakob Britschke, for, um, well, for ruining my evening uh, by sending me this post from Interesting Engineering on, Inst on uh, Instagram, where there was literally a, a picture of two zip ties on what looks like the Mars rover of some kind. And I've got to say, I'm, I'm appalled at NASA, quite frankly. I mean, surely they could have invented something new. Well, you'd think NASA would be the kings and queens of hacks, wouldn't you? Well, absolutely. I mean, they, 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 you know, they invent loads of cool stuff, don't they? Kind of stating the obvious. But yeah, zip ties. Anyway. If you can better the donut bar end plugs, make sure you get involved ready for next week's show. Or well, two weeks, in fact, because next week's already on the app. Uh, you can upload ready for the week after that to the app right now. It's now time for Caption Competition, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. All you got to do is put a witty caption in the comment section down below that relates to a photo we'll give you just one moment after the results from last week, of course. You just about got that out, didn't you? Just about, yeah. Uh, last week's photo is this one of Theo Gagan Hart at the Tour de France, and the winner is Stefan Anderson Saal. Caption, I'm not even going to try because Tom Bloody Bishop clearly needs yet another water bottle. How many bottle cages does that guy have on his bike? Well, <laughs> fair point, Stefan, yeah. I think you mean Tim Bishop, um, the comedian, of course. Um, but yeah, I mean, Tim has worn quite a few these days. So, uh, so Stefan, GCN bottle coming your way. Ingenuity at its best with that caption, I think. A slight in-joke maybe, but Tim Bishop has won an awful lot of caption competitions over the years, hasn't he? He so, has yeah, indeed, yeah. He does need to invest in some bottle cages. Uh, this week's photo also comes from the Tour de France. This is Guillaume Boivin of the Israel Startup Nation. Good, that was a good accent, mate. Thanks, mate. I thought you'd like that. Both, uh, both names there. Go on, do it again. Guillaume Boivin. Oh. <laughs> nice. Well, let's hope you're equally as impressed with my caption starter. Uh, Guillaume Boivin adds his name to the alternative Tour de France list of riders by trying to do the entire route off-road. Guillaume Boivin, you, you were more impressed with him. I was, yeah. No, I mean, I see where you've gone with that. A bit like Lachlan Morton, you mean? Yeah. Just trying to do things a bit differently. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got that. Right, yeah. get your teeth stuck into that, ready for next week. And oh, any of you could win it, except for Tim Bishop. <laughs> No, Tim, come on. We like your comments. You get involved as well. Right, before we get on to what is coming up on the channel this week, we will start, as always, with our favourite comments that you've been leaving under last week's videos. Although, actually, we're going to start with something that was not on a GCN YouTube video, but was on the breakaway on GCN Plus. Because for eagle eyed viewers, and there are a lot of you out there taking to social media to voice your, well, disgust mainly, it turns out that Dan's been selling foreskin suits on eBay. <laughs> Hello. And I didn't realise that they would have to get a fresh skin suit every day. It was quite remarkable that he could be left without one today. Well, I, I didn't know that either. I mean, you're, you're given a kit allotment from your team at the start of the Tour de France, and I personally got four skin suits, but I only used one for the two time trials and sold the rest on eBay <laughs> at the end of the race. Box Fresh, BNIB. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, if you've got one of Dan's of it, yeah, skin suits, exactly. let us know. Who knew that was such a thing as a foreskin suit? Well, yeah, I still, you know, more, even more astonishing as to how much money I got for them in hindsight. Oh my god, I don't want to know. I mean, do people even search for that kind of stuff? Mm. Like, well, know? I mean, I had no idea how it would sound when I talked about selling my four skin suits. Ah, yes, okay. <laughs> but, yeah, said quickly could be taken in another way. Yeah, as we inadvertently have stumbled across the new Two Ronnie sketch. Four candles, <laughs> no, we've got four skin suits instead. <laughs>
People have got really dirty minds, haven't they, basically? Uh, right, yeah. on to some comments from last week's videos then. And underneath the one where Ollie looked at how little power he might need to average 30 miles per hour, uh, Keith Austin put, as much as Ollie gets kidded about biking, his biking fitness, that was some seriously impressive power. Well done, Ollie. If only us mere mortals could go as fast as Ollie. Keith, uh, meanwhile, uh, sorry, I've got to say, Keith, I think you missed the point. The video was all about how much the equipment made a difference to his speed. Anyone could go that fast. Not no? anybody. Oh, no, not but, anybody. But quite a lot if uh, Ollie can. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan Y on the same video says, Ollie's, Ollie always looks like he's holding a basketball when he talks. <laughs> and when you read that comment, it's quite remarkable how true it is. I must mention this to Ollie. <laughs> That's a great point. Maybe he's like maybe he like practices in the mirror with a basketball or something like that. But yeah, or a beach ball maybe. Yeah, it's slightly big for a basketball, isn't it? But uh, yeah. <laughs> Please can Very someone do some comment. Photoshop? What is Ollie holding whilst presenting? You, you know what to do with it. GCN app, please. Uh, right then, um, under the uh, the Strava challenge video, so this is where we, we tackled a group Strava challenge, see which presenter rode the most. Uh, Charlie Wynn said, if you tracked how far Dan walked to the fridge, he would have been near the top. Did you not track that? No, I sorry, mate. Well, I put in cycling, virtual cycling, and canoeing, which is a curveball. Those are the three things, but not walking to the fridge. No, unfortunately not. Um, yes. Uh, Saf1981 puts, OK, so I've watched this, and there is a major editorial mistake in the title. It should have read, how many excuses can Cy make in a week? That's just harsh. I was trying to let you in on some real-life insight about how difficult it is sometimes to ride. So, I mean, they were excuses. Of course they were. So but, you're now you know. making excuses for your excuses. Well, yeah, you know, it's just like, yeah... A lot of people out there know what it's like to try and squeeze in bike rides. And some days you just got to say, no, it's not happening. <laughs> so it's just unfortunate that I was having to make a video about it. But uh, anyway, there we go. Um, yes, under how to corner like a Tour de France pro, uh, Kreutz said, Connor, remember to keep your centre of gravity low. And that is the one thing that most of us can do better. <laughs> yes, he does struggle with keeping his centre of gravity low, Connor, doesn't he? Uh, band tech. Uh, we looked at the use of glucose monitoring, which you're now no longer able to use in competition. Uh, just because I'm ginger put, can't believe Connor was taking the pee out of size glasses, having now seen this. Yes, his science glasses did look rather funny. They did, yeah. A lot of people uh, giving me a bit of grief for my glasses on the Strava video as well, actually. Were they? Yeah, which is weird, because, you know... There's some cruel people out there. Yeah, I mean, there. I don't know what's wrong with them. And just but, next door um, to you as well. I did actually get a bit of grief when I went to the wind tunnel um, and our aerodynamicist guru, Xavier Disley, took one look at them and was just like, why Why would you disturb your aerodynamics in quite such a different way on your face? Really? Yeah, apparently they would be, they'd be adding a couple of watts, so he thought. We didn't do the test, but, you know. You better do four um, versus one again, so. Uh, right, so moving on to what is coming up on the channel over the next week on Wednesday, which is tomorrow, if you're watching this when the show comes out, uh, we have got a very detailed insight into how to use chamois cream. How to apply it best. Um, now, I don't think we're going to go into quite that level of detail, are we? I was going to say, is it the first ever 18-rated GCN video? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, oh, God, no. No, we're not going there. But, uh, but no, some very interesting insights um, from Mark Beaumont, actually. He was a man you probably expect to have used his fair share of chamois cream over the years. Anyway, moving on to Thursday, where we're going to look at Lycra versus baggies. I don't actually know what that's about. Is that about aerodynamics or comfort or it's just not, general? It's, what should you wear for gravel riding? Uh, ah. or, or WTF should you wear for gravel riding? I there seems to be point. a lot of rules in gravel riding for an event and discipline that shouldn't have many rules. Is it frowned upon to have Lycra in gravel riding these well, days? No, so, so a true graveller would just say whatever, whatever you want. Are you mocked if you don't have a handlebar bag on? No, um, mm, yeah, maybe actually. Mm. No, I don't think so. It's just come as you are, isn't it, gravel? Yeah. Uh, right, on Saturday, uh, we've got Cheap Bike versus Pro Hill Climber. So uh, for, for anyone who's seen Andrew Feather's remarkable talents at going uphill, um, what happens when we gave him the Amazon £399 superbike? Oh yes, I can't wait to see that one actually. Uh, and then on Sunday, we've got GCN on an e-bike versus Pro Cyclist. Oh yes, Ollie sees uh, how, uh, how he can match up to James Shaw 
So uh, More challenges. Indeed, yeah. Uh, now, on Monday, I'll be wrapping up the last week of the Tour de France with the Racing News Show. Speaking of which, uh, that is pretty much the only race we've got on GCN Plus this week, because there aren't that many other races on, but there is one more. On Sunday, a uh, one-day race called the Vuelta Limburg Classic, which will be commentated by Jose Bain and Magnus Bagstedt. So you can watch that presumably before the Champs-Élysées stage starts because it's pretty late in the day, isn't it? It is indeed. Uh, now, we have, of course, got a couple of documentaries and films for you this week, also launching on GCM+. Plus. We've got Aussie Rules, which I'm so excited about. I can't tell you. It's basically um, Matt Keenan, so uh, legendary cycling commentator from Australia, has gone back to catch up with Baden Cook, Robin McEwen, and Stuart O'Grady, amongst others, to uh, to get the lowdown on Aussie sprint culture. So, uh, so that's a wicked documentary. If uh, if you're into your Mm. sprinting from well, back in the day plenty still to watch then coming up both on GCN but also on GCN Plus over the next week and don't forget there's a whole library at this point of long form documentaries and films available on GCN Plus and none of them are particularly time sensitive in fact I don't think any of them are actually so no. they'll all be relevant and enjoyable to watch forevermore indeed I tell you what we'd love to know which are your favourite GCN Plus films mm. at the moment actually so we're going to set up a poll in the GCN app so you can let us know precisely that um, so so is it the Mark Beaumont Around the World in 80 Days films? Is it uh, Mark and James's Chilly Descent, uh, Bikepacking in Colombia, any of the tech films? Make sure you let us know over on the app. Yeah, do that. Right, that's the end of the show, I think, this week, isn't it? I think it is, mate, yeah. Uh, it was a short Hacks and Bodges section, but I feel like we've really jabbered on quite a long time since then. So we've made up for it way. with your foreskin suits and, yeah. Uh, yeah, all sorts of stuff. So as ever, well done to make, for making it to the end, should I say. We'll see you again next week. Powers of endurance like Mark Beaumont. <laughs>